this man here has done for Moonshine Radio and the DJ and Aggie. This is the whole lot combined into one. And I'm sure you know who that is because every Sunday in my request show, at least there's 10 requests for this number. And that's the one and only, the wee man from Dungannon. That's here you raise the boards. Bertie Sweeney! Come on, Bertie! Suck it to them! Thank you very much indeed, Terry Wogan, for that lovely introduction. Here's a wee item that uh, I recorded some time ago. It's a poem, a special request here tonight for a man called Ray McSherry and his good wife. They're here from Armagh. And it's a thing that I recorded. It's a, by a well-known Tarun poet called W.F. Marshall, a man who was able to communicate the rich colloquial speech of his native Tyrone. This is one of my favorites. It's on a cassette called Through Marshall's Tyrone. If you don't want to go out and buy one tomorrow, and love you. All I have to do is to sell another one, and that's two that we have sold. So it's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Say, it's ten poems on a cassette called Through Marshall's Throne. This is one of them. It's called The Drum the Killy Devil, if you know what that is. And it goes something like this. I met a girl in Burra and she said her name was Sarah. And I thought she was as fair a louse as ever wore a shoe. So I went and sat beside her and with tea and buns supplied her and to soften her I tried her with a lozenger or two. <laughs> then later I got bolder and I nipped her on the shoulder. Oh, I nipped her and I told her I would take her on my knee, but she said, You'll be in bother, for I'll go and tell me mother. I'll go home and tell me mother if you're impotent to me. <laughs> but she said it with a twinkle and a brow without a wrinkle, and her laugh was like a tinkle that invited laughing back. She was started to provoke her and to hug her and to poke her till she vowed that I would choke her, and her stairs began to crack. Says I, now don't be silly. I've a farm and drum to kill I, and the more it may be hilly, there's a handy bit of bob. We'll be happy there together with a bullock in the heather and a goat upon the tether and the donkey and the dog. Well, it wasn't long we tarried till the two of us were married and home the donkey carried us, the presents made a load, and on them Sarah sitting with a locker and a kitten as would jingle like a flitting up the drum the killy road. <laughs> but the night was getting chilly when we come to drum the killy. I could hear the bleats of Lily as the grave came off the ass. Says I, I'll get a bucket, or I don't know how she stuck it. And I lifted one and took it up to Lily in the grass. Well, the goop was very willing, and the bucket bravely fellin', but the milk was nearly spillin' when I heard an awful squeak. And then there come a clatter over stones and lion water. It was Sarah on the bather up the lunar to the feet. She was lappin' like a lion, and her petticoats was flying. She was roaring, she was crying, fit to waken up the dead. Oh, she come without delayin'. And between the girls and praying, I made out what she was saying. John, John, the devil's in the bed. <laughs> I run in to see the devil with a mind to speak him civil. And behold, your Sarah's devil was a hairy old buck goat. <laughs> with a smell for human noses that was anything but roses and a beard on him like Moses, and a dicky at his throat. Says I, says I, says I, that's three times I said it, says I, <laughs> says I, my neighbor Mickey must have done it for his tricky, but a goat that wears a dicky is a goat I can't abide. And because a man that smelled him would incline to do it seldom, I cut 
the rook that held him and chased the book outside. Ah, sometimes me and Sarah dresses up and goes to bed. But she'll never let me wear a decent dicky like the rest. And a thing that is uncivil is to mention Sarah's devil, the drum Achilles devil with the dicky at his chest. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about communication, communicating with each other, talking to your neighbor. How anybody can communicate with my wife is a mystery to me. Must be about the most ignorant woman in the north of Ireland, I said. Last Tuesday, a helicopter landed in the back garden. She went out and threw it breadcrumbs. <laughs> no. I would give you a rinse. Last Friday, what do you hear? You can't talk to him. Last Friday, this wee man called up at our house. Now, a lovely wee man he was in a nice black pinstripe suit and the waistcoat and the black tie. And I remembered well, he was carrying a briefcase in his right arm. So he came up our driveway and he rang our doorbell. That's on that side. Sorry, he rang, if you ever call. He rang our doorbell. My wife answered the door and the wee man with a briefcase looked up at my wife and he said, Pardon me, madam, but would you like to become a Jehovah's Witness? I said, love to, son. Love to, but I couldn't. I never even saw the accident. And you have, no, you now, the men will appreciate this. I mean, if anything goes wrong in our house, you have to guess what's wrong, you know. She never says it outright. She'll never say that she wants me to talk to her. I might as well be in this house on my north zone for all the attention I ever get out of you. I'm sitting here day in, day out, looking at that same bit of faded wallpaper on the back wall till I'm sick. <laughs> my mother. God rest her soul, I hope she's not having the night. Did that woman not try to warn and advise me? I wouldn't listen. What did I know about life? Young skip of a girl, 37 years of age. What? <laughs> I talked to that woman about everything, about politics, current affairs. I just sang to her last night in bed. We we're lying side by side, just talking. If you saw her, you'd know that's all we do, is just talk about it. I turned around and I said, I said, tell his dear. I always call her dear. I can never remember her first name. I don't know how to I said, I said, tell his dear, what do you think we should do about this new devolution bill? She says, you better pay for it or they'll cut it off first thing in the morning. Folks. 